I'm super excited to talk about happy entrepreneurs because it's something that I am on a quest to always be. So good morning, everybody. It's 7 a.m. Coffee with Shanda. Good morning, Instagram's on live with me this morning, too. I don't get to go on Instagram very often. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube later, I just want to say welcome to 7 a.m. Coffees with Shanda. The whole reason why I created these is so that we can get up together. You can hold me accountable to being on fire, ready to take on the day, excited to go after big dreams. And of course, some of you guys know that this year in 2019, my whole vision is to actually fail 19 times, which means the whole concept is like, I like, well, first of all, I heard a story of someone who made it their ambition to fail a bunch of times. And I was like, oh my God, that would be amazing. That would so work. Like all the moments that you set goals and aspirations that that um, you, even if they're stretchy, you still somehow believe that you might be able to hit them. And so you go after them. But like, what if we actually went after the things that freaking scared the crap out of us? Like the things like, um, you know, hire an employee that maybe before you've ever hired an employee before, or hire somebody that you really can't afford and you're scared, you're scared to do it. Or um, go all in on a strategy. Like I was showing one of my clients, if she stopped doing all of this other work that she was just doing and only focus on her events for the next year, she would triple her, or she would triple her income, right? And have way more time for her life if she only went all in on this one strategy for this year. So my point in sharing all this with you is that everything comes down to the fact that will these things make you happy? And the thing is, is no, none of it's gonna, the more money is not gonna make you more happier. It's actually gonna amplify whatever you already are. So if you're grumpy and moody and emotionally triggered, Holy cow, that goes to a whole nother level when you make more money. So I'm a firm believer in a lot of the things we chase. We chase them because somehow we think we're going to have a better life or we're going to be happier. Like we want to, we want to reach that happiness. And I'm not saying that the, these things that, that growing a business and, and impacting the world, it definitely does bring fulfillment if you're on track to do the thing that you were actually created on this planet to do. However, however, I have really found that gratitude, and I know that we talk, many people talk about gratitude um, all the time, and I've had moments in my life, and let me know if you've had this as well. I've had moments in my life where I was really connected with gratitude, at like writing out what I was grateful for in the morning and writing it out at night, and I had really explosive months, like hugely explosive months. Um, my relationships are always so much better. My relationship with myself, uh, as far as my fitness and just self-love and all those things are always so much more amped up when I'm on gratitude, right? And, but, but, you know, for me, I don't keep that gratitude, you know, uh, routine going throughout my entire life. And then I find myself in a position where I'm like, gosh, like, I like, happy, not unhappy. I mean, I think most people know that I'm a pretty happy person, but we want to talk about you. We want to talk about you and me and how we want to amp up every aspect of our life so that we're really enjoying the most of our life that we can. Um, my friend, Jesse Itzler, I had him, I did a program, two programs with him before he blew up and is doing all these endurance, uh, you know, challenges, which if you haven't done them before, you really should try them. They're incredible. But um, he, uh, he, when he was working with me and my clients, he would say things like, um, you know, I take, I take a couple hours every day to only focus on me. So I don't resent my wife, my kids, my business, you know, and I like, I, like there's all these clues is what I'm trying to say. Like with some of the cool people that we spend our time with, with some of the cool people who come on coffees with Shanda, I look back at my own business and some of the people that I've helped along the way that have brought such huge value to my life. And at the end of the day, the biggest value pieces have always been happiness. Like I've never, I've never found that money makes you happy. I've found that who you're being in the process makes you happy. But here's the fundamental piece. Whether you're like, like a leader in a company or you're an entrepreneur or you're supporting your spouse or whatever it is, if you actually are the freaking best, like, like, and I mean, and seriously, like competitiveness is good if it's, if it's a healthy way, if you go about it a healthy way. Like if you want to be better than everybody around you and part of that being better is actually like making your competition stronger, you know, like if, if you, if you, if you have this type of comp competitive edge, then what happens is you get this hit of happiness that you don't get anywhere else. You get this hit. Like, it's like, 
it's like you go to this whole nother level of fulfillment and joy and happiness. It doesn't matter if you're doing nothing. Like if you're just sitting in your house, like I'm doing right now, you, it doesn't matter. If you are riding this edge, if you are riding this edge, and so think about, think about your life right now. Like think about your life. Like who are you in your marriage? Like outperform your spouse, like outperform them and see the hit that comes back. Not only of love from them, but love for yourself, that you're the leader of your relationship. You're, you're playing on the leading edge of like adding joy and love. See, you can't lose on this game if you play like this. But if you sit back and you're like, you know, um, why is somebody not doing something with, for me? Or like, um, I'll think about my sales team for a second. Like, like if I was in my sales team, I'd be the fucking best. And then I'd raise them all to the top, right? Like, so my point is, is like, don't ask for permission to step in. Don't, a- don't ever ask for permission to step in because no one will, and you will never, you will never, you will never feel empty if you're the person leading a charge for success. So whether it's in your marriage or your relationship or whether it's um, in your community, your mastermind that you study with, um, you know, who are you being in that mastermind? You know, like, who are you being? Or are you not in a mastermind? If you're not in a mastermind, oh my God, smarten up. Like, we don't do better alone. That is like the devil's work right there. We do better in community. We are community people, right? Like, we, we do better that way. So get in a community and then rise the community to the top. Be the best. Push the edge. Call people forward. You know, call them forward. I play a contest every year, a bring a friend contest. And there's always this leading group of people that are leading it. And they're the ones that get the most out of it because they're on fire. And then they're rising the competition amongst themselves so that they get better. And then they see what they're made of. And then they go ahead and they bring that back into their life and their business. And they have the cutting edge, but they only have the cutting edge for a certain amount of months. Because if you don't live like this, if you don't live like this, then it doesn't stay. You see, it's kind of like, taking supplements or, or working on your health. If you take supplements and in, in your life is like your, your body's like all balanced and your hormones are balanced, everything's great. It only takes a couple of weeks before that that's not the case anymore. And you've got that unbalanced, like significant unbalance. And then it takes a good amount of time before you get that foundation back. You want to hold the foundation of being on the cutting edge in everywhere in your life. So now let me just talk about something else. There are takers. There are takers that will suck every ounce of your energy out of you. You have got to find a way to either enroll them to be on the cutting edge of a movement with you, whether that's in your friendship or in a company or in a contest or whatever it is that you're up to. You've got to enroll that person to either play that game or they will get inside your head. And they have the ability to sidetrack your progress. I've seen great people be around other great people who actually are takers, right? Like they're still, takers can be great people. They could be really fun to be around. They could be smart, intelligent. They have all the power of the creator, but then their head's off in the wrong place that sabotages things. You have to watch that people who are takers inside your life either get enrolled, don't bitch at them, either enroll them to be a part of something bigger or let them go. And this is one of the hardest things. I mean, I remember listening to my mentors along along the years share with me and and my friends, even like Bedros and people like that um, from Fit Body Bootcamp. And like my friends, I remember them saying like constantly, like you gotta cut out the poison, you gotta cut out the poison. And, And sometimes, I hate to say this, but sometimes the poison is someone in your family. I mean, that, that literally, ever, like, you try and enroll and try and enroll and try and enroll, but they won't enroll into a, a, a higher caliber of a relationship with you. And so you make a decision, and that decision is how do you actually operate with them in a way that doesn't take you down? it might be making an agreement that you don't talk about a certain subject that could take you down. So when I was growing my business, I could not talk about my business with my mother. Because every time I talked to my, my mother about my business, she would set the fear of God in me. 
right? Not, not a good, I'd say actually the fear of the enemy in me because God was on my side. God was leading the calling inside my heart to go after it. And I was holding myself back. And every time I spoke to my mother, she would be like, be careful. And she was just trying to help me. But that became toxic as far as the growth of where Heartcore is today. So I just didn't talk to her about it. And by the way, I still don't. I share with her when there's successes because she's always amazed and, and I'm growing, growing her belief system in me and the business and all of that type of stuff. And now it's to the point where she's like, even on the other side, so high, she's now starting to like, now it's, I should start talking to her actually, as I'm share, sharing this, it's having me have an aha moment. I should start sharing with her some of the things I want to do now because, and just test the waters and see, because she's now thinking I'm 10 times bigger than I am. And she's calling me forth on some things, right? And so <clears throat> my point is, is that you, you, when you, wherever you're at right now, you get to look at what is the cutting edge. I'm reading a book called uh, Blitz Scaling, and it's incredible. Like, uh, it's actually incredible. And one of the things that I love about it is it's really sharing with me how as you're growing a company, you know, as you're growing a company that, like, I can't remember the exact words, but it's basically like drive hard and fast because speed is critical. Like speed is super critical. And I found that there's been some moments inside my business. And have you felt this? Like where you've held yourself back? Has anybody held themselves back in their business? Like you, you haven't invested in something because you don't have the money that's holding yourself back because you got to be resourceful, right? Or you, um, you haven't, like maybe you hired a coach that's not a great coach and you really got to hire another coach and, or maybe they are a great coach, but like the other coach is going to put the foundation underneath you to go higher. And maybe the two of the coaching together would be ex explosive, but you're like, I can't handle both of them at the same time. You know, like, where is it? Like, is anybody? Yes. I'm seeing some yeses. At least I'm seeing them on, 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 uh, on Facebook. I'm seeing some yeses. Okay. Where's some areas? I'm curious. Where are some areas that go ahead and type this in? Where are some areas that, that you found yourself holding yourself back? I think this will be peaceful for all of us to like read like all of the areas that some of us are hold. So where's a big one? Where's a big like moment that you can remember that you either are now or have held yourself back? from growing your company, write that down. What, like, just what, what was that moment for you? Just, just let us see the moment. Like, where was it? Where'd you hold yourself back? And where I just found recently, one of the areas that I, that I started holding myself back was, you know, originally I didn't have a sales manager. Um, and I was like, okay, let me hold back the zone event. So the zone event is going to be smaller than it. if you don't know about the zone event or you, like love our coaching, you need to get your butt to the zone event this year because it'll be the smallest it will ever be. Meaning that we, I'm going to unleash it next year only because I've already got the hotel in Palm Springs. So it'll be nice and intimate. Come and hug me and learn from me, learn from my clients. And I promise you, you won't spin at this event. It's coming up soon. It's the zone event.com, but that page is got like, it's literally says we're opening the door soon, but the zone event is going to be open the next two weeks. So we're going to open up tickets for this, but come to it because it will be the smallest event and the most intimate that we ever have at this point, which it still will be over a thousand people, but it's still going to be as small as it will, it will be for the rest of the duration of the zone event. So come, but um, so one of the areas was I was holding, I held back the zone event this year because I didn't have a sales director. Right. And our sales director resigned and then we found a new one. And so I held it back. So that was a bad, that was a mistake. I should like, there's nothing that gets your butt on the fire quicker than having to do something. Like I say, if you want to speak, go book yourself a speaking engagement, right? You, you want to um, do, you, you want to do, you want to get better at like doing video than schedule a live, you know, send an email out to your list and schedule a live. You want to talk about like a breakthrough moment and like get courageous then talk about something that's messy in your life online publicly and let everybody know you're going to do it. Like hold yourself to the fire. So you do it. And I know this, but I still held the zone back, which will be a great benefit for you guys to be in a more intimate room for this round. But another area is I want to turn up the volume and we're doing, we're doing all these multiple two day events right now. And, um, I was doing about one a month 
And now I've decided to do two a month. Well, now I've decided to do four a month. And when I went and talked to our team about doing this, it just changes the scope of everything. And so I know that I've got to build a team in house. Like I know that, but with that being said, it's like, it's like this part that I don't know again. And so just like you, I run into these walls that I don't know again. And like, it's like the scaling, right? It's like, the scaling that goes up, it's so easy to make decisions in our comfort zone. Well, I don't have the resources for that, or I don't have the person for that, or I don't have blah, 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 blah. And you've got to become resourceful when you put yourself on the line. And this is why you got to live on this cutting edge. Like if you, if you want these great things in your life, but you're not leading the charge wherever you're at, like you're not leading the charge in your marriage, you're not leading the charge um, in, in the sales team, you're not leading the charge in, you know, wherever, right? Like everybody wants a sales team, but nobody wants to be a great seller, right? And it's like, come on, guys, like if you want to be the best, you got to ride the edge and stop asking for permission to jump in. And then you got to look at this other component and go, okay, where am I still living in my comfort zone that's preventing the growth from happening? Where am I still, where am I still hovering on a decision? A decision that you still haven't made because you're contemplating the right decision. Well, well, blitz scaling was like a huge relief. And also talking to my girlfriend, Colleen, huge relief on like, hey, like a reminder. Like, hey, it's supposed to be messy as it grows, right? It's supposed to be. In fact, like companies like Amazon and all these companies, and, and I know that maybe you don't relate to Amazon, but like I do now. I never did when I started, but I do now. And I realize even if I started a new company tomorrow that was in an industry I knew nothing about and I was on ground zero of an idea, I still have something to learn from that. And that is to unleash, let things fall apart. Look, customer service isn't going to be perfect as you grow. Coaching isn't going to be perfect as you grow. Fulfillment isn't going to be, maybe renewals will be non-existent. And nobody likes to deal with this stuff because they feel like they're losing money or losing ground. And it's like, hey, guys, it's okay to lose ground. It's okay to fail. It's okay for things not to be working. What's not okay is when you're still hemming and hawing your way to the starting line. And you're wanting these aspirations and these goals up here, but you're still, like, taking a break. You're still, like, taking a break. And it's like, at what point is the break over? Because your life is now. At what point? At what point are you going to jump in and lead the cause? Look, in, no matter where I have been, I have been bold enough to lead the charge. It was a lot easier to lead the charge when I worked for somebody else's company. And I got a lot further because of it. Honestly, I got a lot further because of it. It's a lot more riskier when it's your money on the line and you're responsible for other people's lives. There's a lot more pressure. If you don't like pressure, get out of entrepreneurship because pressure is a privilege. Pressure is a privilege. And what you do in your heart and in your body with pressure is it's really the game changing moment. It's really the game changing moment. So I just wanted to talk about this topic with you this morning. And my hopes are this coffee with Shanda and every coffee with Shanda that I do at 7 a.m. My hopes are that it just unplugs the piece that needs to be unplugged right now in your brain, in your heart, in your energy, in your momentum. And that it just unplugs that for you so that you can go after it today. So today, today is valuable. Your day today and how you spend it is valuable. So don't waste it. Don't waste it. Ask yourself, what is the thing that if I created it today would actually make me feel like I was riding the edge of the best? Who do you need to be today to be able to create that result? And when you do that, then like share it with everyone. Don't just keep it in your own little life for the people around you and just inspire them. Like get on lives, get on video, get post something, you know, share with people, share with people how you're riding this edge. I mean, there's, there's nothing that would warm my heart more than to have a bunch of you guys tagging me on Instagram or Facebook and literally on videos and things that you're doing where you're sharing about living on the edge. Like it would thrill me that you were actually rising other people who are on the internet watching you. I don't care if there's 10 people watching you. If three of them, two of them, or one of them are inspired by you to 
play at that level to lead on the edge. Like I have a leadership training and it boggles me. It boggles me if somebody goes through that training and still isn't the best and they're just good. It's like, okay, good is better than not good, but come on, lead it, lead it. You are valuable and what you see and what you feel and what you're capable of is so important. And your children and your friends and your peers and your masterminds and your clients and everybody around you deserves for you to show up a little bit or a lot more. So I'm going to leave that for you. But when you win, please go back out there and help other people win with your realization. All right, you guys, let me know if you felt this was a good coffee with Shanda. Of course, I love it when you guys tag people and share. Um, that just is an indicator to me that this was valuable for you. All right, you guys, I'll see you tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Coffee with Shanda. Bye.